Hello, I am back to reality. Um, and welcome to my very first installment of my mini podcast series called In Three Minutes. And recently I've opened up an account at Curious Cat. And you can find me there, Amador Andrea. And you can type away um, all your questions there. Of course, we're keeping it quite formal. So. We'll try and answer the best way we can and we'll thematically, I guess, arrange all your questions. Of course, I'll still type my answers on Curious Cat for all of y'all there. All of (laughs) y'all. Okay, so let's go to the very first question. Anon asks, Do you think Manos' way of architecture is the absolute definition of Filipino architecture? Um... Of course, Sir Manuosa is really um, a brilliant architect and I think he has really defined his niche inside um, the realm of Filipino architecture. But I don't think, you know, there's one absolute way that we can define Filipino architecture. I've talked about this before (laughs) with um, a group of students, but... um, let me give you that answer. See, the different locations in the Philippines have different climates, right? From the mountainside to the seaside. And I don't think um, there is even one way of the Baha'i Kubo that was built. If you look at the different books available of, on Filipino architecture, from Gerald Lico to Norma Alarcon, I don't see that um, there are two houses that look alike. So, there. Next question. What is the best way to continue the evolution of Filipino architecture? Well, architecture is culture or part of the tangible culture of a nation. And to best, you know, um, continue that, it is for us not forget to forget um, the past. Um, it is not to go back to, you know, the Bai Kubo because, you know, like a person, all of the scars, all of the joys, all of the memories are part of who the person is today. And all our scars, all our colonial scars should be part of that. Even the um, influences from our Chinese ancestors should also be there, of course, if it's contextually correct. Um and then there are a lot of contexts. It's just that we need to use them all. And, of course, design with time in mind. Meaning, um, we should not forget all of the things that we already have. Like plumbing, and air conditioning, and all of these technologies that we can use for our architecture today. So, Alright, the last question to be answered in this um, installment Do you think there will be a point that we can already describe Filipino architecture in a tangible way? Well, I think there are, but um, more in the material aspect of it. But um, in the process of building vernacular architecture or Filipino architecture, there are already five distinctive um, features that Gerard Lico uh, mentioned in his book. And it's there. Just read the, read that one out. But it's not in the form, basically, I think. Even in the research that I've already done, it's never in the form. We can never... Well, not the never. I don't think that we can possibly put our um, entire archipelago in one form. But yeah, if... It is sustained by tradition and if it is built by Filipinos or even built um, for the Filipino, I think that is, you know, Filipino architecture. So hopefully (laughs) I've answered your questions. Um, Ask me anything on Curious Cat. I will be waiting for your questions. See you next time. Bye-bye.